so we continue looking at genetics and we're going to look at complete and incomplete dominance so we're going to start with complete and incomplete dominance and we are first going to look at complete dominance so a complete dominance is a type of situation in which the heterozygous and the homozygous state have the same phenotype so a complete dominance is whereby the heterozygous and the homozygous state have the same phenotype and we know that the area that surprises another is referred to as dominant and the area that is uh, suppressed is referred to as recessive and uh, this condition is what is referred to as the complete dominance and uh, in our last uh, presentation we actually looked at the, the Mendel experiment and Mendel actually used uh, two plants, he actually used a top plant and uh, a dwarf plant. So for complete dominance here, we can say that uh, for the top plant it was represented by uh, capital letter T. So we had capital letter T there which represented uh, uh, which represented the top plant and for the dwarf plant it was represented by two small letter T's. So if we perform uh, the closings there if we do our closings so the offsprings all the offsprings they're going to be in uh, heterozygous state And uh, this will be the offsprings. And these offsprings are going to be in a uh, heterozygous uh, state. And all these are going to have the phenotype of Tau. So the phenotype, the all be Tau. So auto. So as you can see, if we have, uh, if we have a uh, T, and a small letter T that represents Tau, and we have uh, two capital letter T's. All these will represent uh, the uh, the, uh, the Tau offspring or the Tau uh, species. That means that complete dominance is a condition in which the heterozygous and the homozygous state uh, have the same uh, phenotype. And uh, we actually know that the area that is uh, the area uh, that surprises that surprises another area is said to be uh, dominant And uh, from uh, this uh, closing, we can say that the allele that is dominant there, it's T. And the area that is suppressed. So the, uh, the suppressed area. Is called. Uh, recessive and from that uh, example we can say that the small letter T is a recessive area. Let us now look at incomplete dominance. So incomplete dominance is also referred to as uh, code dominance. So this is a situation where there is no complete dominant gene. So this is a situation where there is no complete dominant gene. This means that the heterozygous organism will show an intermediate trend. So the organism that will be produced will show an intermediate trend. And uh, we can give some examples that expresses 
uh, co-dominance. Uh, co For example, if you mix So if uh, you mix a a white coated cow and a, a red coated cow when these two mix or we, uh, when we make these uh, two cows to breed uh, their offsprings they are going to produce uh, the uh, the color which is neither white or red but the new color that will be produced will be wrong so that's the uh, that's the example on uh, incomplete dominance and we're, we're going to explain incomplete dominance by looking at one flowering plant which is referred to as uh, Mariberas chariba so uh, we're going to explain incomplete dominance by using this plant so maribelas jaripa so if we get a red flowered maribelas jaripa plant is closed with a white flowered one the offsprings that are going to be produced are going to have the pink flowered plants so for uh, for this type of a plant if you get uh, red flowered uh, red flowered and if it is closed If it is closed with a white a white flowered one uh, the offsprings that will be produced Those spring will produce pink flowered plants. So uh, if we look at this type of uh, example and if we say that let if we uh, let R to represent uh, late flowering plants so this will represent uh, red uh, flowered plants uh, and if we say we use W to represent white flowered plants of uh, jalipa uh, so if we let R to represent red flowered plants and we let W to represent uh, white flowered plants the F1 generation could be worked out as following. So we can say our male plant, then we can have the female plant, then we can write down the phenotype. So uh, for the phenotype 
our male plant there is going to be a lead flowered plant so it's going to have lead flower lead flower then for the female it's going to be white flower uh, since we say the uh, phenotype shows the physical characteristic of the organism and as you can see the phenotype for the male plant we've just written uh, red flower and for the female plant we have written white flower let us now write down the genotype for the genotype this uh, this tests that this is the genetic constitution of an organism so the genotype for male plant of a jaripa that means that it does two capital letter ara then that of a white flower going to be represented by w and w then we can write down the gametes So the gametes are going to separate. So I'm going to write my R there, another R, then my W, and another W there. Then I'll perform the, the closings. So I can have R W. Can also have R W there can have R W can also have R W then you can call this as F1 generation genotype And uh, for the F1 generation, let us write the F1 generation phenotype. For the F1 generation uh, phenotype, since we know that phenotype is the physical uh, characteristic of the organism that means that all these uh, plants are going to be pink flowered so all pink flowered plants that is going to be the offsprings so all pink flowers so uh, from these uh, cro crossings you can see that in our parents, our starting parents, we had red and white. But the offsprings that were produced, they can be what? Pink flowers. So this is an example of uh, co-dominance. Or co-dominance or incomplete dominance.